Hey everyone, welcome to That's Cakeable, I'm Janine and this week I'm taking you to a whole new world. Whether you love the original animated Disney classic from 92 or you're looking forward to the epic blockbuster this year, everybody loves Aladdin. So this week I'm going to show you how I made this gorgeous little jasmine cake with a magic carpet on top flying in front of the city skyline. It is quite time consuming, but it's a lot more simple than it looks. If you can do a jigsaw puzzle, you can make this cake. And the beauty of it is, is that you can use any character, any colors and make it your own. I'll be putting a link in the description below of where I got all of my pictures for my templates. And I'm sure you'll find some other Disney princesses there too. Thank you for joining me and I hope you enjoy this week's video. So this week I'm starting a little bit differently and doing the topper first. I've printed out my template, cut around it and then placed it on top of a piece of black fondant and then used my rolling pin to roll over that which leaves us with the impression. I took a very sharp X-Acto knife and cut around the edges of that impression. It's reasonably thick because we need it to be able to hold up on the cake. So I'm putting some skewers in to the base of that topper so that we have something to attach it to the cake with. Now to make the little windows and doors, I took some light gold fondant and just cut it into rectangles and then used a very small roller tool just to round out the tops. And then I attached that to my silhouette with a little bit of water. I went on afterwards and painted all of those little windows and doors gold. Once that's done, pop it aside to dry because you'll need that later. Okay, to make jasmine, same sort of thing, very thin piece of black fondant and I've just cut out her head and hair area and rolled over that to leave the impression, then cut around that with my X-Acto. To make her face, I've taken some flesh coloured fondant, done the same thing, just cut out a little face and tidying up those edges now and then I placed it in the right position on that silhouette with a little bit of water and now I'm making her little headband. So I'm just marking out where the headband is and I'm taking a snake of fondant and I'm rolling that up and putting it on the hairline above where the headband is. Taking my Dresden tool and marking in some hair markings and now I'm going to put her little headband on. We're going to build all her hair up. So just a little piece of turquoise fondant there and now we go ahead and do the same with all the rest of the hair. I'm doing the fringe area here. So two tapered little, what looks like a moustache, pieces of black fondant on the front for her fringe. Just follow that black template as your guide and build up all of her hair around her head. Doing exactly the same thing, dressed and tall, marking it all in to make it all, you know, hair-like. And there she is. Now I've just rolled a tiny little piece of light gold fondant and I'm pressing that in the middle of her headband for her little gem. Now we go on and do the body in exactly the same way that we did the silhouette and her head. I've done that in a flesh color and I'm doing the same with her clothes. Now you wanna make sure that you over trace her clothes a little bit, make them a little wider and longer so that there's room to overlap them over the body. Hurry up, she's cold. There she goes. Now I've taken two lighter blue tapered pieces of fondant and just made her waistband. And now I'm taking two teardrop shaped pieces of fondant to make her shoulder line. Now this is what I mean about jigsaw. So I placed her against her head and I'm marking out where her arm will go cutting out a section there so there's a void so her arm can fit in. Now I've already done that for her leg and as you can see it's just like putting a jigsaw puzzle together. Pop a little bit of hair on the bottom there so it looks like her hair is flowing behind her leg. Now we're going to make the markings for Jasmine's cute little face. I just use that template again and mark where all of the eyes and nose and mouth goes with my Dresden tool. I've taken two little balls of fondant for her eyes and I'm attaching that with a little bit of water. For her eyelashes, I'm using an edible marker 
and the same again for her eyebrows. I've taken an orange edible marker just to make a little present for her nose and some edible art paint to paint on her cute little lips. For her catch lights in her eyes I used the tiniest white non perils but you can use tiny pieces of white fondant and then just a little bit of pink petal dust on her cheeks for that blush. I made an area for her ears, popped on tiny little pieces of flesh coloured fondant for her ears and then popped on some gold pieces for her earrings. And for the rest of her jewellery, a small snake of fondant around her wrist for her bangle and the same for her necklace. There she is, pretty as a picture, ready to move aside. Oh no, she's not because I've forgotten one thing. I painted all of the yellow parts of fondant gold just to give her a bit of sparkle, you know. She's a princess after all. Now we're gonna make her magic carpet. So I've taken some purple fondant, rolled it out thinly, and then I've used a template to make a rectangular shape. Just cutting all those edges. that aside and now we're going to make our insert which is blue. I'm cutting a straight line along the top and then I'm going to measure it up on our purple piece and mark where I want it cut because we want just a small purple border all the way around. Marking the base and now I'm just going to attach that to our purple piece with a little bit of water. Now I have this embosser, it's just a scrapbooking embosser but it works really well with fondant and I just wanted to make it, you know, embellish it a little bit, make it a bit fancy. So I pressed that embosser onto the blue section of the carpet and we'll get back to that later and make it look gorgeous. Now I've taken a small, very, very thin snake of light gold fondant and I'm going to wrap that all the way around the edge of the inner section, so the blue section of our magic carpet. I cut a little short, but made up for it in the end, you know. Patching's my game. And then I did the same around the purple section. Just attached all that with a little bit of water. Now I've taken tiny pieces of fondant, cut a few little lines in them and using them as our tassels on the corner of our magic carpet. On top of them I just put tiny little yellow balls to finish them off. And now I went around and painstakingly painted all of the yellow sections in gold. This is optional, but I don't know, just looks pretty. And then I took a very, very fine brush, it's actually a nail art brush, and painted gold all in those embellishments. Now on to making the cake. You've seen me do it a hundred times before, so we're just gonna rush through it. I split my cake, I leveled my cake, and filled it with a purple buttercream that was flavored passion fruit. And simple syrup every layer, built it up, built it up, built it up. And because this is quite a tall cake, I did add three skewers so that it didn't tip. Just make sure that your skewers are more around the edges because you're going to need room on the top to put your topper in. First, a lot of ganache. I'm using a white chocolate ganache, leveling out the top, putting my top board on and making sure that my top board is level with my base board. You might wanna check out another video to see more in depth how I build my cakes. So I've done a crumb coat and then I set that aside to chill and I came in with my final coat and I've iced that and now I'm leveling the top of my cake. We want a nice level top. Yep, spirit levels out again. She's level. Just tidy up those edges and then I set her aside just to set, which I usually do overnight. Now it's time to cover our cake. So I've chosen a nice purple fondant, the same color as we use for our magic carpet. Roll that out and no, I haven't gotten really tall overnight. 
I'm standing on a step stool because I'm a short person and it just makes it easier. So I cover my cake and I make sure I secure the top edges first so that the fondant doesn't drag and rip. And then I just go along and smooth that around my cake, cut off the excess. And use my smoothers to get that nice sharp edge. I also use my flexi smoothers to do the same thing just polishes it. Now I whipped out the airbrush for this one. I'm using a pearl sheen from Americolor to give it a bit of bling, a bit of luster. And now on goes our jasmine. So make sure that you've measured your cake and your character enough so that she's going to fit properly. That's all pre-planning. And then with a little bit of water, that's all I needed to adhere her, I pop her on and start putting together our jasmine jigsaw puzzle. On goes the little bit of hair on the bottom. And now a little bit of water in that void that we made for her arm. Pop her arm in and there she is, standing proudly on her cake. And now I've embellished the top with some sugar pearls. I used gold. And in the video, you can see that I've used like a greeny sort of color, but I changed my mind later on and I swapped them out for just a white pearl color. So I'm just using a balling tool. I make small holes into the side of the cake so that they can fit in easier and just chuck a little bit of water in there, pop them in, and there she is. Have to finish Jasmine off. She's not Jasmine without her magic lantern. If you had three wishes, tell me what they'd be. Comment below what you would wish for, at least one. So to make her lantern, I just rolled a piece of fondant very small and then took another small piece of fondant, rolled into a snake, cut it off to make the spout, and then a really thin snake, rolled it onto the side of the lantern to make the handle. I just attached that to a little hand with a piece of water and then went around and painted that in gold, which was a little bit messy, but I went back in later on with a damp brush and cleaned that up. Oh, she's so cute. Now for the piste resistance, we're going to finish it off by placing our topper on top, marking out where you would like that, and then the magic carpet I've just attached to the top of the cake with a little bit of water. Press that on exactly where you want it. And our cake is done. And there she is, our gorgeous little jasmine cake, fit for any child's birthday. Or big kid, you know, I wouldn't mind having it for mine. As I said earlier, I will pop a link in the description below as to where you can find the pictures that I used for the templates for this cake for both the topper and our cute little jasmine. And I'm sure you will find other characters in the same place. So you could make any Disney princess. Or I'm pretty sure they've got superheroes and stuff there as well. You've got the concept now, so you know how to do it. So if you like this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. YouTube loves the thumbs up. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to hit the notification bell in the bottom so that you don't miss out on any of my future videos, which I upload weekly. And considering you're here already, why don't you just slide right into that YouTube wormhole and check out some of my other videos. Thank you so much for joining me. I look forward to seeing you again next week. But until then, now that I've shown you how, you know what you gotta do. Go get your cake on. Okay guys, see you next time. Bye.